of the show. Thanks for watching. We are back to work after a, a full week of vacation. I have to be honest, I'm glad to be back. We went on a cruise. You ever been on a cruise, Guillermo? No, never. We went on a, uh, one, a cruise to, through the Suez Canal. You ever done that? <laughs> very slow, very, very, it's almost as if we weren't moving at all. I have to say, after all the fighting and the tooth gnashing over the past few years, it was nice to see the whole world come together to make fun of a boat. It really was. <laughs> the container ship known as the Ever Given uh, was wedged in the Suez Canal for the last six days, it was finally freed this morning by a fleet of tugboats, same way they got Trump out of the White House. <laughs> now, the Suez Canal, I think we all learned a little bit of, about it in school. It's one of the main arteries for ships carrying goods around the globe. It was completely blocked by this ship. Basically, capitalism had a heart attack over this last week. <laughs> the ship that got stuck was loaded with IKEA furniture, which means thousands of men in their 20s now have an excuse for why they don't own a headboard. But <laughs> the value, the total value of the goods that were unable to get through amounted to something like $10 billion a day. And they say we may see the effects of the log jam in stores. In particular, they say we might have a shortage of coffee and toilet paper because the good news is without one, you might not need the other, but <laughs> still it's crazy that something like this can bring the world of commerce to a halt. I never realized how narrow the Suez Canal is. This is what it looks like from above. Uh, so much of our stuff has to squeeze through that little, can't we loosen that up at a carpool lane or something? <laughs> I mean, if this was a urethra, they'd have to operate. They would have to... <laughs> They're still investigating how it happened. The shipping company is blaming a strong gust of wind, which, I don't know. They finished this canal in 1869. In 150 years, this is the first time they had wind? <laughs> We're also learning more about the origin of the coronavirus, COVID-19. According to a new report from the World Health Organization, COVID-19 most likely took hold in an animal, specifically uh, this cat with a waffle on its head. <laughs> Former members of Donald Trump's pandemic team are speaking out. Dr. Deborah Birx, you remember her with the scarf? She says she believes the death toll could have been much lower if the Trump administration had taken the virus more seriously. Dr. Birx sat with Dr. Sanjay Gupta last night on CNN to belatedly bemoan her work at the White House. You were the COVID coordinator and no one's uh, no one around you is, is wearing masks. That must, have, that must have felt like you were being marginalized, that people really weren't listening to you. They I was marginalized every day. I mean, that, that is no question. Um, I would say majority of the people in the White House did not take this seriously. <laughs> well, thanks for letting us know now. <laughs> As I recall, you sat very quietly while the president suggested we gargle Windex to get rid of it. But <laughs> Dr. Burke says she's being censored by the White House as if she couldn't have called like a dozen news networks at any time. There was more leaking coming from Trump's White House than Trump's golf pants. That would not have been a problem. <laughs> Dr. Fauci expressed similar thoughts about uh, the pandemic being mishandled in his interview with CNN. And so today, Trump responded with a letter that begins, statement by Donald J. Trump, 45th president of the United States of America. Based on their interviews, I felt it was time to speak up about Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx, two self-promoters. <laughs> I love when the guy who puts his name on everything calls someone a self-promoter. <laughs> Trying to reinvent history to cover for their bad instincts and faulty recommendations, which fortunately I almost always overturned. In a fake interview last night on CNN, Dr. Fauci, who said he was an athlete in college but couldn't throw a baseball even close to home plate, <laughs> It was a roller, tried to take credit for the vaccine. <laughs> I was the one to get it done, and even the fake news knows and reports this. Dr. Birx is a proven liar, <laughs> again, with very little credibility left. Dr. Birx was a terrible medical advisor, which is why I seldom followed her advice. Time has proven me correct. I only kept Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx on because they worked for the U.S. government for so long. They are like a bad habit. <laughs> And then it ends. And then he fell asleep in his mashed potatoes or something. I don't know. <laughs> Meanwhile, President Biden today announced that within three weeks, 90% of American adults will be eligible to get the vaccine. 75% of Americans... 
including a majority of Republicans, approve of the way Biden has handled the rollout of the vaccine, which is driving them absolutely nuts in Trump land. Eric Trump popped his dopey little head onto Fox News <laughs> yesterday to ask a question that is on literally no one's mind. Now, at what point does Joe Biden, at what point does the administration come out and say, you know, he did a really good job delivering us a vaccine, and now we're going to spend, you know, the next six months distributing it out to everybody else? I mean, what, why does that need to be controversial? Why, why can somebody not admit that somebody did a phenomenal job? My father did a phenomenal job with the vaccine, and it literally, it probably saved millions and millions of lives in this country. Yeah, I wonder why. I, mean, I bet it's because your father told us to drink bleach and went golfing 30 times while the virus was spreading. Just a hunch. But <laughs> Eric loves saying my father. He says father more times in one interview than I did in seven years as an altar boy. I saw how much time and effort my father put into the job. You know how many times my father went down to the border? There's no one that knows my father as well as I do. My father did a phenomenal job. I just don't understand it. My father, my father, my father, my father, they tried to impeach my father. Oh, well, somebody please take that kid fishing already. It is, <laughs> if they weren't so terrible, this would be the saddest family in the world. And while Eric, Eric is uh, pleading for credit on cable TV. Daddy Donnie stopped into a wedding at Mar-a-Lago. He rents his house out for weddings, okay? <laughs> One of his friends slash club member donors got married at Mar-a-Lago on Saturday, and the former president had some beautiful words for the bride and groom. I turned off the news, I get all these flash reports, and they're telling me about the border, they're telling me about China, <laughs> they're telling me about Iran. How are we doing with Iran? How do you like that? Well, they weren't ready to make a deal. They would have done anything. They would have done anything. And this guy goes and drops the sanctions. And then he says, we'd like to negotiate now. We're not dealing with the United States. They don't want to deal with us. Uh, you know what? I said the same thing at my brother's wedding. It was word for word. <laughs> I love this so much. Watch the band behind him as he goes on and on about how great he was. They're like, can we just play Dancing Queen and get the hell out of here? Look, it's a disaster. It's a humanitarian disaster from their standpoint, and it's going to destroy the country. And frankly, the country can't afford it because you're talking about massive, just incredibly massive amounts. Our school systems, our hospital systems, everything. So it's a rough thing. And I just say, do you miss me yet? Do you <laughs> <laughs> it's a wedding. It is a wedding. <laughs> I used to be a, a DJ at weddings when I was in college. I've seen some weird toasts. Never have I seen one like this. How do you give a drunken wedding toast when you don't even drink? We were saying we did get 75 million votes. Nobody's ever gotten that. They said, get 66 million votes, sir, and the election's over. Well, I got 75 million, and they said, but you know, you saw what happened. 10.30 in the evening, all of a sudden, they said, that's a strange thing. Why are they closing up certain places? But, you know, a lot of things happening right now. I just wanted to say, it's an honor to be here. It's an honor to have you at Mar-a-Lago. You are a great and beautiful couple. And for many, many years of your life, Fun, yeah. This is what he does now. He babbles at weddings. He complains. Whenever someone plays the song YMCA, he magically appears like Beetlejuice. <laughs> and so he ended the speech by instructing the guests to violently storm the buffet table. <laughs> Yet another Trump ally may have to pay for uh, peddling his nonsensical election claims. Fox News just got hit with a $1.6 billion lawsuit from Dominion Voting Systems. I feel like the only reason Dominion hasn't sued Trump yet is they know for sure he doesn't have a billion dollars. But they're now suing Fox, uh, Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, and Mike Lindell, the MyPillow guy, who has a new, new theory that may finally prove that his head is full of feathers, too. All the evidence I have, everything is going to go before the Supreme Court, and the election of 2020 is going bye-bye. It was an attack by other country, communism coming in, I don't know what they're going to do with what after they pull it down, but it's how, how, down. But hang, hang on, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Donald Trump will go, go be ahead. back in office in August. There. There, yeah. The crackhead pillow salesman is right. By August, Donald Trump will be back in office, and Mike Lindell will be living in a van by the river. <laughs> Wait until the pillow guy does a deep dive into this one. According to multiple studies, human penises, specifically the ones on men, are getting smaller. They are shrinking as a result of pollution. 
So finally something to blame our shortcomings on other than dad. You know, they say this uh, pattern of shrinkage is caused by chemicals in certain plastics. Do you know the average person eats about a credit card's worth of plastic every week? Forget the vaccines. That's how Bill Gates gets the chips into us. He's, every year we eat a whole deck of Discover cards. Researchers believe that if we don't get our act together in the future, all men will be Ken. And plastic... And if that doesn't get Republicans in Congress to do something about climate change, I don't know if anything will. At least it might create some new environmentalists. So what brings you to Greenpeace? Uh, speaking of wieners, Congressman Devin Nunes, this you couldn't make up. The, Team Nunes last week had to correct multiple mistakes on their financial filings because the mistakes were made by his campaign treasurer, who also happens to be his mom. <laughs> Doesn't Devin Nunes look like a guy who'd hire his mom to be treasurer? The answer is yes, he does. Our new vice president is reportedly a bit PO'd. Kamala Harris is said to be frustrated because she and her husband have not been able to move into the vice president's official residence. Apparently, there are renovations going on that still aren't finished. It turns out uninstalling the Pence's sex dungeon takes a lot longer than they thought it would. It's crazy that they're still two months, they're two months past the inauguration and they're working on, imagine you just became the second in command on the most, the most powerful country on earth. They make you spend the first three months on a futon. <laughs> in college basketball, the elite eight round of the NCAA tournament is underway. If they continue to win, Gonzaga could become the first fictional university to finish a season undefeated. As of uh, showtime tonight, there were two, uh, Cinderella candidates still in it. UCLA, an 11th seed, and Oregon State, a 12th seed, and uh, as is uh, six seed USC. In other words, this is a great year for people who filled out their bracket with a magic eight ball. <laughs> Tonight is notable, not in that, not one, but two of our guests are here in the flesh. Things are loosening up a little bit, which is exciting, but it's also a little bit nerve wracking. I was telling my wife, Sally, uh, that I'm Molly, sorry. <laughs> Molly, right? Yeah. I was telling uh, her that, um, I was saying I'm ready to go back to normal, but I also want to keep the good things from lockdown. Like I want to get rid of the, I want to be able to go out to eat, but I also don't want to have a meeting ever again. So we've been holed up for so long, I feel like maybe some of us have forgotten how to behave in public. So we put an instructional video together to help you acclimate. And please pay close attention because this is one of the most important things we've ever done. Society, remember that kooky place? Now that a vaccine is on the way, you'll be back to the real world lickety split. But in case you're rusty, here are a few tips to ensure a successful return to regular life. Let's begin. These are pants. They go on your legs. Which are those two log looking things below your penis? <laughs> pants are important and you're expected to wear them in public. Almost got it looking good now out the door you go uh-oh looks like someone's developed a crippling fear of the outside world well bottle up those emotions you little bitch it's time for work isn't it great to be back in the office with your creaky chair and obsolete computer hold on what happened to your pants Oops, you're fired. Oh well, but at least now you have some free time on your hands. Hooray for movie theaters. Now you're not supposed to use your phone during the film, but nobody cared about that before. Yes, I'd love to take a survey. So why start now? Shh. You shut up. I'll kill you. Isn't it great being around your fellow man once again? Ah, humanity. It sure is the worst. Well, that's it for now. Join us tomorrow when we reintroduce you to High Fives. Nope. All right, there you go, there you go. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, click the subscribe button. And if you didn't like it, well, you hurt my feelings. <laughs>